Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Suzerain, uh, a new sort of choose-your-own-adventure role-playing political game uh, in a fictional 1950s universe. We are playing the DLC Rizia, which just recently came out, and puts you in the shoes of a monarch in, again, a fictional sort of oil petro-type state. Although it's a petro-state that is running out of oil. So that's kind of the unique uh, unique aspect to it. There's also the other piece here where we are running out of oil and we are dealing with sort of nationalism unfolding in the um, in our neighboring countries that are trying to, we, you know, we've got a gold monopoly, for example, in, in, or not monopoly, but we've got shares of gold in mining interests throughout the region. And one of those countries, Morelia, is threatening to nationalize their gold interests. And so we're running on a knife's edge of an economy right now with a plus one oil extraction per turn, a plus one gold per turn. But if this next conversation at the midst goes the way that I think it is, we could really see our budget take a hit. You know, it's right now it's plus two per turn from MITS revenues. I'm hoping I can limit the, the, the hit to maybe make it only plus one so that we're at least neutral in terms of cash. I think, honestly, guys, you know, if I could go back, I would probably restart the series at this point. I, I don't have any immediate indicators to say that things are about to fall apart, but it just seems like, you know, we had the initial burst of oil, but then, you know, the oil kind of started drying up in a couple of places. We had gold revenue that's been drying up a little bit. We have political situations that are impacting our economy. Our military expenditures are eating into our economy. You know, we are doing... We're seeing, you know, higher welfare expenditures take a hit on our economy. Why is that negative two per turn? The welfare expenditures I passed were not per turn. I also think there's some bugs in here that are hurting our... Hurting some things. Like, I, th I think I made some decrees thinking that things were not going to hurt the economy that they are. Where's the, where's the royal decree for welfare? Health and education. Housing. Tenant protection. So that's negative one budget, but only, no, only once. It's not per turn. Negative one budget per... Plus one budget per turn for illegal substances. Health and education. There's no per turn penalty there. And housing... So why are we taking a negative two per turn for welfare expenditures? I don't understand that. That should not be a per turn cost. There seems to be some hidden bugs in the game that we're playing and that hopefully will get ironed out where it tells you things that are not true for some of your, um, some of your decrees that you passed. And I think that's one reason the economy is doing worse than I think it should be. I'm trying to appease the people. You know, I've been investing heavily in the military, but I'm trying to appease them at least a little bit. We'll get the better Air Force base next turn. Alright, well, in any event, uh, let's go to the next thing. Let's go to the MITS Gold Conference. People love their Air Force bases. They do like air shows, though, right? There's like a new... Um, what is that? Oh, my God. I can't even... New IMAX thing with the Blue Angels, right? The thrum of the helicopter blades was almost deafening. Helicopter blades? It's like 1952. We're traveling via helicopter in 52? Like, I know they existed, but I think of those dinky little helicopters in MASH. I don't think of it being like an Air Force One with a helicopter. That's That's bold. I look out the window, we're above the Mefton Basin, an expansive dried up lake containing millions of years worth of sedimentary deposits. The past decades of industrial activity have turned it into a mosaic of underground and open pit mines linked by roads, railways, and makeshift canals. Smoke rose from the surrounding refineries, turning the sky a musty shade of orange. My eyes followed a cargo-laden freight train as it departed the Mefton Station. 
Next to me, in the helicopter, Elena noticed it as well. One of Lespa's by the looks of it. The gold will be shipped out by the Meridian port and reach Vino Robin by this evening. The birthplace of Lespian protectionism, relying on international partnerships for gold imports. Tell me how that squares up. You're absolutely right, Your Majesty. Lespian economic theory does favor produ production over foreign imports. But they make an exception for resources like gold and gas, especially when Lespian companies have a hand in their extraction. I recall you took a rather pro Morella stance at the Alliance of Nations sessions. Are you still leaning in that direction? I want to respect Morelia's wishes, but we can't ignore the ITC's great economic importance to our kingdom. No, not since my talk with President Smolak, we can't afford to lose any more of our gold. Yes, the trade zone is on Morelian land, so naturally Morelia should have a greater say in its operations. I'd go with three. Like, I, I do want to respect their wishes, but I also, we need to protect the kingdom's interests as well. I hope Elena is a little bit more clear-eyed than uh, Lorento, who at the uh, International Conference of Nations seemed completely... He always seems naive when it's talking to Vez when it's talking to Smolik, when it's talking to anyone. He seems incredibly unsophisticated and naive. We gently touched down on the helipad of the Cooperation Center, the building where the ITC board met, met meetings and other diplomatic functions are held. We immediately met by a large security retinue and ushered inside to the reception hall where the welcome ceremony was to take place. Alma Santana greeted us by the entrance. A security staff member showed Elena to her seat while I followed the Morellian Prime Minister to the front of the hall. Thank you for coming, Mr. Torres. Prime Minister Sultana, a pleasure to see you again. And you. I hope you've been well since our account encounter at the AN. I was sorry to hear you were unable to reach an agreement with Valen. I'm confident today's talks will go smooth more smoothly. Thank you, Prime Minister Sultana. The support of the international community means a lot to us at this time. I hope you'll understand that I am not able to offer my public support. Not yet, at least. I'd like to start straight away, but my advisors have persuaded me that diplomatic protocol must be followed. The stage had been set up, backdropped by our country's four flags. Patricio Alvarez was already sitting there, looking somewhat bored. I took my place next to him. He didn't even acknowledge me. Good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister. Greetings, Your Majesty. We both fell silent. I noticed a certain bleariness in his eyes. I wondered whether his decision to quit drinking had lasted. The hall had began to fill up with dignitaries, ministers, and heralds of corporations. Rusty Montoro was in the back row, talking animatedly to a lesbian politician. He broke off his conversation to throw me a wink. The door to the hall suddenly swung open. Emmerich Heigl entered, accompanied by a pair of bodyguards. He and Prime Minister Sultana exchanged cheek kisses. Alvarez could barely disguise his look of scorn. They're not your friends, you know. They're out to bleed us both dry. Have you ever considered that we might deserve it? Uh... Um, two is a little bit. You really think a monarch would say that? <laughs> uh, three seems naive. I guess two's kind of, I'd say two's kind of sarcastic. The, the Vagslandian Chancellor shook my hand with an encouraging smile. Good to see you, Chancellor. Actually, I was hoping we could speak in private later. That very much depends on Mr. Torres. 
The four of us posed for photographs, the Morelian national anthem was played, and then those of Vagsland, Rizia, and finally Lesbia. Hmm, that shows who takes priority, doesn't it? It's just a ceremony, Mr. Alvarez, don't read too much into it. When the music died down, we escorted to a conference room, together with our key ministers, security details, and a number of legal advisors. Once we were seated, Prime Minister Sultana spoke. Thank you for carving time out of your schedules to join me today, gentlemen. Over 35 years ago, our country signed an agreement regarding the sharing of resources in the Mefton Basin. At that time, Morelia was capable neither of exploring the full potential of the gold located here, nor of fending off raids from our Dardian neighbors. It was only the cooperation of Rizia, Vagsland, and Lespia that the international trade zone could become the thriving industrial center that it is today. Or if our predecessors failed to recognize the social and moral responsibility that comes with such an economic endeavor, and Morella paid the price. I will stay silent. All of us, Morella included, have benefited from a contract that allows us to pay ITZ workers less and grant them fewer protections than in our individual home countries. At the same time, the area around the trade zone has been turned into a dumping ground for toxic chemicals to the detriment of our water systems and the people who depend on them. There is only one way forward. The ITZ must be restored to Morellian ownership. Alvarez audibly scoffed. Is this actually what you believe, Miss Sultana, or are you just parroting the words of Chancellor Hagel? Please calm down, Mr. Alvarez. You may disagree with the Morelian Prime Minister, but this, that does not give you an excuse to belittle her. You are right, of course, but my question still stands. The current cooperation between Morella and Vagsland is based on mutual respect. There is no string pulling. What would it take for Rizia and Morella to achieve such cooperation? If your nation gives credence to my wishes, I'm more wi than willing to do the same. Chancellor Heigl and I have begun working on a proposal to transfer ownership of the ITZ to the Morellian state. The Republic of Vagsland has already agreed to forego that opportunity. Should Rizia and Lesbia choose to buy shares, they could still continue operations in some capacity, all about under strict ownership, oversight, with more input from workers. You must understand that I have Rizia's own, own interests to think about. If I am agreed to, su to such a proposal, I have to know that our economy will remain stable. It is not my goal to bankrupt any of you. We are willing to make individual agreements with each stakeholder to offset any economic damage done by nationalization. Should we vote to proceed with the proposal, I will solicit each of your input. And if we vote not to proceed, what then? Then we'll have to go back to the drawing board. In the case of a split decision, we would have to renegotiate the initial ITZ agreement under a way forward until a way forward is found. But Morelia will no longer accept the status quo. Nor will Vagsland. Lespia stands firm in our conviction that the ownership of the ITZ should not change. If His Majesty knows what's good for his kingdom, he'll agree with me. I was born ready. I have a few more questions for the board. I don't wish to take the decision lightly, Mr. Torres. What else do you wish to know?
Prime Minister Alvarez, if the nationalization vote does not pass, would you still be willing to address the complaints Prime Minister Sultana has made? Of course I would, Your Majesty. I would just like to point out that what a towering achievement it is that the ITZ exists in the first place. Four countries with four vastly different governments coming together for the economic benefit of all? It sounds preposterous, and yet it works. The cooperation, and yes, competition, involved in sharing this valuable resource has not only brought our nations closer together, it has spurred innovation far beyond what any of us could have achieved, individually. We could harness that same spirit to address the very valid concerns Miss Sultana has brought up about the environment and human rights. Or we could throw all of that away, scare off investors, and put God knows how many people out of work, because why exactly? To score a few points with our esteemed comrades? You're doing Morella a disservice by resorting to such a gross oversimplification, but not an inaccurate one, right, Your Majesty? Mr. Torres, if you meant what you said at the AN, you shouldn't even be entertaining this opinion. Whatever is decided today, I'm willing to work with both Riz Rizia and Lesbia. Our differing outlook shouldn't get in the way of a peaceful compromise. Why is Vagsland only supporting nationalization now? Why didn't you hand your ITZ stake back to Morella right after the revolution? A valid question, Mr. Torres. Vagsland's socialist values indeed took a backseat to economic stability in the early years of our republic. But more importantly, the prior leaders of Morella could not be trusted to manage the ITZ with compassion and consideration. Giving away our stake then would have done more harm than good. Compassion and consideration are vague terms. How would you prefer the ITZ to be run? I tr trust Miss Sultana's coalition to develop a system in which the miners themselves have a greater say in the operations. I am prepared to help them develop it myself if necessary. And what happens if Miss Sultana's government gets overthrown or corrupted? Our dedication goes beyond any single Morellian administration or leader. We'll include provisions that safeguard our agreement in the case of such changes. But that won't happen, will it? Not with Hegel by your side. The Chancellor can dress up his actions however he pleases, but his support of Morella is nothing but a transparent attempt to get, regain Vagsland's foothold in South, South Maricopa. Countries can support one another for reasons beyond their own financial and political gain. How do the, how do the benefits of nationalization outweigh the drawbacks, especially where Rizzi is concerned? If one only measures benefits in terms of profit, then yes, I admit our proposition is hardly advantageous. With that said, centralizing the ITZ and restructuring it, its operations with a view towards sustainability will serve us, as, serve us all well in the long term, as will fostering goodwill between the nations of Rizia and Morella. Goodwill is vague, Miss Sultana. Are you talking about a trade agreement, a military alliance?
Let's talk about the river pollution. How bad is the situation? At the beginning of the ITZ operations, companies like Eurizian Royal Gold were allowing their wa wastewater to drain directly into the Erfuld River. Techniques have been refined since then, but the damage has lingered. Toxic chemicals continue to leach into the river's wastewater and are, or watershed and are slowly poisoning the surrounding communities. I might add that the river empties into the Gulf of Morda, which is bordered by Rizia, Derda, and Valen, as well as my country. Any plan for nationalization or otherwise must address this. Wouldn't it be more efficient if ITZ stakeholders took charge of the efforts themselves? I'd like to confer with my treasurer before casting my official vote. Before we continue, Your Majesty, I do think Mr. Mon Montoro should be privy to this conversation as well. This decision does greatly affect his company. King Romus here is the leader of our country. If he says a discussion is necessary, then it is. Well, I'm not laughing. This is not an easy decision. What will be the economic and financial impact on Rizzi if Morella goes through with the nationalization plan? That depends on the exact nature of the agreement. If Rizzi buys back its former share of the ITZ, Morella's plan regulations will limit the revenue we can earn from it. But by privately negotiating the proposal terms with Prime Minister Sultana, we may be able to make an arrangement where we come out relatively unscathed. That would be a real risk, Your Majesty. RRG already almost went belly up after we lost Zill. Thanks to you, we didn't have to waste money on needless safety regulations, but still, nationalization could be a killing blow. At the same time, we're facing unusual high gold demand from Rumberg. With little in the way of gas holdings, it would be difficult for Rizia to carry on a resource-based economy. I didn't know the situation was this grave. It's not grave yet, but we should refrain from making rash promises. Nationalization doesn't seem reasonable to me. What's your opinion? The nationalization agreement doesn't seem beneficial on the surface, but I can see a few possible perks. I'm not saying I support this plan, only that it need not be a disaster for us. Any nationalization plan will still need Rizia's support to go through. That means we'll be in position to make demands. What we lose in gold, we could gain by making a good energy deal, for example. energy deal would be a better long-term solution than relying on gold mining in a foreign country. As long as we have energy to offer, that is. There's one other possibility. We not only buy back Rizia's shares of the mitts, we purchase Lesbia's out from under them. That is a plan I can get out and can get behind. Push Lespa out of the ITZ and increase our gold returns at the same time? Great idea. It's just a thought, Your Majesty.
What was Rizian Royal Gold's role in the labor and environmental violations that occurred in the myths? Not blaming you, Rusty. I don't have the money to buy out Lespa's share, though, do I? I don't know. Uh, our economy doesn't have the problem is our economy doesn't have the money to buy back the shares. So I feel like if I vote for nationalization and then we try to buy back in, I won't have the resources to do it. Two's kind of a middle ground. are making deals with commies now. Uh, it's the only way forward. I'm not going to get their help in, in pails, am I? Didn't we invest in transportation infrastructure, or did we not actually do that yet? Or did we not have the oil to do it? We did not do it yet. Damn it. Okay. Average welfare state. Good living standards. That's good, I guess. Hugo and Lucidia rose to their feet the moment I stepped into the council chamber. My return from Mor Morella had just concluded, and within hours of being back on Rizian soil, I was called for an internal security meeting. Good evening, Your Majesty. I'm glad you could join us. Yes, thanks for coming on short notice. Fine, fine. Let's get to it.
proceed, if you will. What would you like to discuss first? What about your situation in the Zill bombing? Anything new to report? Lucida handed me a sheet of paper from her file. Thanks in large part to your willingness to further fund our intelligence capabilities, evidence points to the materials used in the bombing being in line with what was manufactured at a circuit rise system, an electronics factory located in Pales. We're talking about capacitors and resistors in particular. They're crucial for creating precise and dependable triggering mechanisms. Pales? That news is surprising. What can be concluded is that this is a clear act of aggression against our kingdom. Indeed, but before we jump to conclusions, we must ensure we have all the facts. Blaming Pales without further concrete evidence could lead to a disastrous conflict. I see your point, Your Majesty, but we can't ignore the blatant hostilities. And their provocative behavior regarding the Oris gas field only underscores their intention. But why would Pales do this? What do they have to gain? Maybe it was a calculated move by Pales to exploit regional instability before our gas negotiation, a scenario they likely accepted or anticipated we'd pursue. While that's a possibility, it's also important to consider the potential consequences of such a strategy. Creating instability and resorting to bombing could have resulted in even tougher negotiations, or no negotiations at all, had we discovered the potential link to their involvement. It's a risky approach, but they might have seen it as a means to politi po potentially stronger diplomatic position, which they very may well have succeeded in achieving, considering that we ceded all claim that we we didn't concede all fe what. We didn't cede all claims to the field. Am I reading that wrong? Well, it appears my cousin is incapable of handling the situation itself. Rico's hardline stance isn't working. Perhaps a softer approach is called for. How effectively can he govern after we've undermined his authority? I don't trust Rico. We'll put him under Lucidia's command. I do not trust Rico to as far as I can throw him.
So my lack of money is preventing me from concluding my uh, investigation. A cultural crisis. I'm going to be bankrupt. I don't have negative... Okay, I don't know what that was about. RNC kicks off election campaign. An evening at the palace. The problem in this in this version of the game, unlike in Suzerain's base game, I don't think you can spend deficit. You, there's no option to go below zero. I don't know, Oxlorn. Torres is, is suffering under considerable disruption, but I won't give him the resources he needs to put it down, so I'm sure I'm pissing off my family's party. Good evening, Your Majesty. To what do I owe the pleasure? The pleasure of having in the information you requested about your father's death. Business only, it seemed. Well, let's hear it. Let me start by saying that I've made good progress into who may be responsible. So you do suspect foul play? Unfortunately, yes. There were several individuals I initially found highly suspicious. I'm afraid to ask, but who? I've narrowed it down to five individuals. Captain Gordian, Grand Viseman Ignacus, your butler, your uncle, and even your mother. If what you're saying is true, I'm shocked. Believe me, I was just as shocked too. However, I no longer consider everyone I just mentioned a suspect. I'll explain your reasoning. Tell me about my uncle. Why him? Of all the individuals I've been looking into, your uncle stands out the most. Intriguing. Please go on. There are witnesses who claim they saw Hugo leaving your father's room on the night of his death, just moments before his body was discovered. I thought I talked to him on his de deathbed. It's news to me. Suspicious, to say the least. Given the severity of accusing the Grand Vizar of murder, I wanted to tell you first before I spoke to him. Glad you did. If what you're saying is true, we must handle this delicately. What about my mother? Your Majesty, our investigative efforts have unveiled a rather unexpected revelation. It turns out she was not within the castle on that particular night. Not in the castle? Or where was she? This may come as a shock, but it turns out she was attending a clandestine re religious service just outside of the capital. A denertist service. It's not my place to speculate on that, Your Majesty. All I know is that multiple eyewitnesses who were present at the denertist arch sanctuary that night can verify it. The gathered information has undergone rigorous scrutiny. I wouldn't approach you with anything less. I was first made aware of that, the belief when we secretly conducted a search of her bedchamber, revealing hidden denertrist literature. 
I didn't think much of it until I stumbled across the name and address of a sanctuary handwritten on the inside cover of such books. My curiosity was piqued. I delivered a de I delved deeper into the events of that night by gathering all available records, logs, cross-referencing, attendance lists, and witness accounts from the service to piece together the puzzle. Needless to say, this proves your mother had an alibi and had nothing to do with your father's death. At least she's not a suspect. Why do you suspect Titus? It actually relates to Weisman Ignacus as well. On the night of the king's death, Captain Gordian was charged with guarding the, his chambers. Yes. And what's most curious is that according to witnesses, he let Grand Weisman Ignacus enter your father's chambers without any opposition. In fact, Gordian wasn't there at all. Nobody knows where he was. The timing can't be a coincidence. The Grand Weisman's involvement in this matter is suspicious, to say the least. I've had my reservations about him as well. It's always best to trust your instinct in such matters. Where does Sal fit into all of this? I want to know why you suspect Pobble. As you know, it's my duty to explore every possibility. During the time leading up to Valero's death, there was a significant period where he couldn't be accounted for. As you know, to have someone of his status go missing for such extended duration would raise suspicions, especially with Pobble's knowledge of the inner workings of the palace. Could his absence during the time be a coincidence? Sure. But it was something I couldn't overlook. I find it hard to believe he'd be involved in any wrongdoing. Which is why you'll be glad to know that after a thorough investigation, we determined that Pobble had a solid alibi which clears of him of suspicion. The plot thickens. Of course, Your Majesty, we're keeping our eyes on the unfolding drama. As previously mentioned, before Valero's death, there was a notable amount of time when we couldn't establish his whereabouts. After extensive interviews with palace staff, it was determined that he spent his time in the wine cellar. Some suspected him of having a secret rendezvous. In the wine cellar? With who? A delivery person from Canavuto Vineyards who was dropping off casks of wine. Her heedless, disrespectful actions should be conveyed to the Count Venutos. Not her. He- I was right! I knew the butler was making a pass at me earlier. At least, well, maybe he wasn't making a pass at me, but the game may, sure made it seem like you had a choice to make a pass at him. No problem with that. Wouldn't be the first king. Just, the game certainly hinted at it. Basically, Gibbo, as long as Pobble didn't kill my father, I don't care what he was doing that night. I have to confess, I'm not surprised. Your butler is too dapper for his own good. With that said, we were unable to turn up any conclusive evidence of what he and the courier were doing in the cellar. It's all per I do wonder, though, if that bubble bath scene had gone differently with our butler, could we have had an affair with him instead of her? Instead of Lucidia? I wonder what the if the game allows that romance option of Pobble. Pablo and I are old friends. I'll bring it up with him. No need to drag the law into it. In any case, Pablo is innocent of murdering His Majesty King Valero, at least. What about Grand Weisman? Your Majesty, I have reason to believe Grand Weisman's sale may have had a motive to, to harm King Valero. His visits to the king's private chambers were frank frequent, and on the night of his death, Sal was there. Please elaborate. 
As you know, King Valero's decision to suppress the minority religions in our kingdom was met with resistance, many including Grand Weisman. As the kingdom's counselor on religion, he strongly advocated for individuals to freely practice their chosen, their chosen faith. My theory is that Sal may have feared the king would eventually come after him as well. The idea being that the king goes after one religion, what's to stopping him from going after another? I never could imagine it would lead to that outcome. I have to choose one option? So... So we know it could be the wise men because he was in the, in the place with my dad. It could be Hugo, because he came out of there. We don't know what Titus was up to. So here's where my brain is at. We know Hugo and Sal are threats. I'm concerned about Titus, though. I feel like the game is kind of giving us... I don't know that these are red herrings, but I do feel the fact that Titus was not there and we don't know where he was at and what was going on. I think we need to figure out what Titus was up to in case there's some bigger plot at work. Is there anybody involved outside the castle? If there's anyone involved outside the palace, they're prob Titus was probably the go-between. That's where my thoughts are. So let's figure out what's going on with Titus. Especially if we're worried that, like, there could be coups. House Saison call. In a joint statement, several House Saison nobles have declared their support for the RPP. Although links between the Saisons and the opposition are well known, open declarations which defy the monarchy are rare and signal weakening relationship between them and House Torres. That's not good. Former oil workers organized for RPP. Okay. Opposition figures lodge complaint against Rizian Radio? Hmm. Well, I don't have any authority to do anything right now this turn either, so... The Electoral Commission recruiting poll watchers. Call from Chancellor Hagel. In the middle of the night, I was woken up by a knock on my bedroom door. I heard Pobble's voice in the hallway. Sorry to wake you, Your Majesty, but there's apparently an urgent call for you downstairs. Be right out. Any idea what this is about? Nope. It's on the blue phone, so it's a world leader. Your aide will have more information. Chancellor Hagel's on the line. Good evening, Mr. Hagel. Well, Mr. Torres. I'm truly sorry to disturb you at this hour, but we have unfinished business. What do you mean? The nationalization vote was unsuccessful, but the future of the trade zone is far from decided. Despite your refusal to grant self-determination to Morella and its mines, I still see a chance for cooperation between us. Right. Our differing opinions on the ITZ shouldn't keep us from making other arrangements. I'm happy to see you see it that way. Different as we are, there is one point on which we may agree. The Republic of Lespa does not belong in the Mordian International Trade Zone.
Uh, I agree. Prime Minister Alvarez's behavior during the meeting was appalling. As much as I personally dislike the man, he is a mere symptom of a disease called capitalism. Oh boy. Capitalism was what kept the myths running all these years. That's where we disagree. I don't like Alvarez as a person, but we're fighting for the same principles. Capitalism was what kept the myths running all these years. Let me lay it out for you, Mr. Torres. Prime Minister Sultana is planning to reopen negotiations on the MITS profit sharing agreement. Any new version will have to be approved by three out of the four countries on the board. Say you want to make an agreement where Lesbia came away with nothing, as long as Vagsland approved it. It would still pass. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think I know what you're getting at. And I like it. You'll be invited to Morella for negotiations soon. I want you to make sure Lespa receives a small, as small a share as possible. At the end of the day, I'm only asking you to act in Rizia's best interests. all for trying to out-negotiate out -negotiate Lesbia, but I'm afraid Rizia doesn't have the resources. Can you offer us any help? Approving the final agreement will be enough, I think, I should think. Needless to say, we still expect that you'll make up for the way Rizia treated Morella over the years. Let's see what I can do. But if you need further incentive... Vagsland cannot publicly support a monarchy like Rizia, especially after the way you voted. But we can sell you our naval equipment, which, as I need not remind you, is vastly superior to Rizia's own. Make sure Lespa winds up with nothing, and Vagsland will assist you with a significant upgrade. Why can't Hegel just ensure we win the arbitration? I don't care about any of this other stuff. I do want to bring up the gas field. I'm going to stand, le stab Lespa in the back. Rizia will definitely need to be able to defend itself afterwards. I cannot promise anything, but it's good to know that you'll be in our side. His people are crazy about our royal family. LOL. Maybe it's because we're good, so good looking. <laughs> um, everyone loves royals, Chancellor. Even diehard socialists. I don't know about that one.
Maybe it's because we're so good looking. Your vaglish genes, then. Incidentally, you can count on Vagslin's support in your current arbitration case. You have our gratitude for that, sir. I believe Rizia deserves it, but more importantly, the Aeon must respect the sovereignty of territory I of islands. Good night, your majesty. Until next time, comrade. Lol. <laughs> I don't want to piss off Rumberg and my uh, sister-in-law, so I'm trying to be trying not to go too hardcore down the communist route. Plus, we did agree we were we were pursuing a third way. I'm kind of confused on why I'm losing support. Locally. It doesn't seem like people are actually, like... So basically I ran out of money so I couldn't investigate Zill anymore. So this is a weird episode with uh, some left, very left-leaning countries supporting the monarchy of Rizia. I suppose because it suits them with the negotiations over the gold mines. But uh, it seems like the situation in Pales is coming to a head. We will see how that unfolds in the next episode. Until the next episode, however, the his this is the historical gamer saying... Once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.